Okay. Hello. Hello. You are joining us this morning, Hi. almost afternoon, depending <laughs> on this good Friday, on this very, very amazing Friday. Um, depending on where you are, where you're watching us from, it's almost noon. But we are Black Coffee, Honey, and Grits, just in case you happen to stumble upon this channel, don't turn away. Definitely stick around. We're going to be talking a little bit about food today and making healthier choices. So we are Black Coffee, Honey, and Grits, ladies. We are Black Coffee, our lip strip with honey, and sometimes we got some grit, but we always have SAS class and all that ass. And um, we're just uh, women here, real women having real conversation about um, real topics in our lives. And this week we are a little bit more focused on health as far as nutrition and not so much fitness. Fitness we spoke about a couple of weeks, a few weeks ago. But today, it, this week is more about nutrition, more about nutrition, mindset, etc. So today we're going to continue the conversation. And since it's Friday, I decided let's talk about food. I think everybody likes to talk about food. And I want to talk about the different ways, um, different healthier choices we can make, um, healthier combinations we can make. As usual, if you know anything about, about Black Coffee, Honey and Grits, the conversation could go in any which direction. We just roll with it. Sometimes we bring it back. Sometimes we just let, we just let it be what it be. Um, so today is no different. And um, so I want to I want to kick off the conversation by um, saying that oftentimes we like you'll I rarely will you ask a person how do you eat like how like how do you eat do you eat healthy and rarely will they say no I eat shit all the time like that's never really the conversation not really um people sometimes acknowledge that they could do better and they can make healthier choices but more or less people say yeah yeah I'm pretty healthy and I feel like there's a misconception about what health is and what healthy is and I know that I was I really followed that misconception. I was the poster board of it. Not only did I appear to be healthy, because people would say it to me all the time, I would have an apple in my hand and be like, oh my God, Carmel, you're so healthy. And they didn't know I had chocolate stashed in the office. They didn't know that I was eating shit at home. They didn't, they like, they, you don't know. Like food is something, yeah, you could do. There's a lot of eating that happens in public, but there's a lot of eating that happens behind closed doors that nobody needs to know about. And not so much that I was hiding my food. I myself thought that I was on the healthier side because I was paying attention to certain things like how much protein I was consuming and how little calories I was consuming. That's not healthy at all, but I, I looked a certain way and I practiced a certain lifestyle with regards to fitness. So to me, I was, I was healthy. Um, come to find out oh, only three years ago, I was diagnosed with three conditions. I was diagnosed as pre-diabetic, fatty liver disease, and high cholesterol. How does somebody like that claim that they're healthy or that they're doing the best with their nutrition? You really can't. And I just took a deep dive into, um, um, becoming plant-based and it was in becoming plant-based that I started to learn a lot about food and nutrition in a way that I had never before. And, um, I learned lots of swaps. I've learned lots of things that, you know what, that doesn't serve me. So I'm just going to leave that alone. And that doesn't no, that no longer has to be a part of my life. And I've come to terms with, okay, maybe kale is the thing that I eat now. And in doing so, my palate changed, um, the way I eat changed the way I look at food changed the way I look at my body changed the way I look at how my body performs for me and it changed and I can I now have a, a better communication for lack of a better word with how my body reacts to foods I can see the direct correlation how my body reacts to food how my body reacts to lack of sleep or better sleep sleep how my body body reacts to exercise or exercise when I'm full and exercise when I'm I'm fasted etc so all kinds of things have come into play and I think that's so important that's something that I feel we lost touched with like we we learned how to ignore the signs of our bodies at a very young age being put on schedules when it came to school or being hungry and our mom telling us or dad telling us it's not time to eat or we're not hungry but now it's time to eat so never mind the fact and make sure you finish everything on your plate we've lost that connection with how our how we we even um read the signs um, that our bodies are trying to tell us. And now, now. 
So I'm, I'm cutting you off. Yes, I am. So tell the people who you are because you're going into a lot. So they might not know who you are. You know what? Maybe we can tell them who we are too and we can join in. <laughs> No, only because you are getting good. They're like, who is this woman? How is she telling us all this? I was diving right in. You are 100% <laughs> sorry about that. And I feel like on Monday and, and Wednesday, I felt like, yeah, okay, everybody's going to introduce themselves. Like I had it. And today I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Dr. Jamicia, thank you for bringing that up. Let's start with you and whoever wants to grab it, can grab it. <laughs> no, who are you though? Because you went into this great, this, this great, Amount of information. Okay. okay. I'm Carmel. <laughs> I'm Carmel Jean-Francois, owner, founder, and CEO of C Fit Coaching. I work with individuals who have come to learn that they they have a food or sugar addiction. And what I do is I guide them in assisting a whole food, plant-based lifestyle in order to combat that addiction and also whatever chronic conditions that come along with it, be it inflammation, be it hypertension, be it um, prediabetes and all the chronic conditions that come along with being addicted to food and sugar. And um, I'm also here to encourage everybody to add more plants to their plates because I believe it is healing. It is medicine. And that's who I am. I am your girl. I'm your coach, health and wellness, fitness and nutrition, vegan coach. <laughs> so Dr. Jamicia, go for it. Hey y'all, I'm Dr. Jamicia. Now I'm I'm not all about the food and the plants on your plate, but I think it's amazing. And we need to look at that. I'm more or less about timing your meals. So I am Dr. Jamicia, the nurse practitioner extraordinaire. I'm also your intermittent fasting and mindset coach, YouTube influencer, speaker, author, all the things. And I am one fourth of black coffee, honey and grits. I'll pass it to you, Shelly. Okay, well, I am Shelly A. Carter out of New Jersey. I'm the founder and CEO of Housing Ministry, LLC. In that space, I use my real estate banking and life insurance licenses to make home ownership attainable and sustainable. I am the one she is talking about who wants to eat whatever they want to eat and show you the apple up front and have the chocolate in my back pocket. I have nothing to do with health and wellness. I, I am just a beneficiary of these women's wonderful expertise. Maisha? <laughs> well, my name is Maisha. I'm known online as Debbie Maisha. I am the CEO of Central Energy Alchemy, and I guide Black women away from sexual shame and fear into greater confidence so they can show up bold and powerful from the bedroom to the boardroom. And I'm the one who will eat the apple and the chocolate in your face and be very happy about it. <laughs> 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 Excellent. I love it. I love it. And just before I was reminded, um, I was talking about the connection. Now, the connection that we are paying attention to is like that dopamine rush and that sugar rush that we consume, that we go through or that we experience when we consume our foods. Let's face it, the foods that are really constantly and consistently thrown in our faces and bombard we're bombarded with, they taste good. There's a reason why the food industry makes a ton of money off of our, I'm going to go ahead and say it, addictions. And there's a reason why we stick to eating this really over palatable, super palatable foods and palatable, I mean, really tasty. They taste good and it's not by accident. And so it makes us want to spend our money on the, these foods. It makes us want to go out and buy these foods because they're so tasty. They're so good. And they make us feel good. You know, they make, you cannot not feel good if you have like an ice cream cone in your hand. You, it brings back your childhood. It just, and it's nice and fresh and re refreshing, especially on a hot muggy day like we have here in New York today. And and it just, it just makes you feel good because it, it tastes so good too. Um, but that seems to be what we are consuming, these foods that are not necessarily healthy for us, especially when taken consistently over the course of many, many years. And, um, and now what, what that does when we eat these foods that are so highly palatable is that we start to lose the sense of taste for kale. <laughs> I'm always going to bring kale into the picture because kale is one of those things that people are just kind of like, Ugh. and I was never one for kale, but 
huh, interestingly enough, I developed a taste for it. And it wasn't through sacrifice. Um, I wanted to pull that out as well. So foods. So what the heck is healthy? Why is it important to eat healthy? And what foods can I consume that would make the cut, make the mark? I'm not talking about, um, I'm not talking right now at this particular moment in time, I'm not talking about reversing any kind of chronic condition. I'm just talking about good old fashioned healthy food. Well, I think we can all agree, maybe not, but I think we can all agree McDonald's, um, Popeyes, foods like that are not necessarily healthy, right? But we also justify it by saying, I don't have that all the time. I have that maybe once a week, maybe once every couple of weeks, um, which is fine. And then we'll say, well, I don't have cake all the time. I have that maybe once a week, maybe every couple of weeks, maybe every time I go to a barbecue. And then we'll say, well, I don't have, you know, so the list goes on and on and on. And when you add everything up, the point that I'm trying to make is that we have most of these foods most of the time and quite consistently. And that adds up and that builds up and that, my friends, would be a little bit on the unhealthy side. But I feel like we all have a basic idea of what healthy foods are. And just so that I don't really take over this whole conversation. I don't want to be preaching at anybody. I just want to like, anybody chime in. What are the healthy? So uh, I'm going to start with you, Shelly. What are healthy foods that you actually <laughs> enjoy? <laughs> I just grabbed Shelly because Shelly is right. I, I just grabbed Shelly. <laughs> no real reason. <laughs> Well, first of all, while you were, b before Dr. J interrupted you, I got a pop-up from Yelp that I thought was really awesome. It said, it's treat o'clock. Oh. <laughs> it's treat o'clock. Time to treat yourself at whatever time you're reading this. <laughs> hey, all of you subscribers, we're going to give you a push notification and say, go eat something yummy. There's ice cream somewhere, some somewhere within some square miles of me. There's some ice cream, and now seems like a good time to go get ice cream. I'm sitting here in the health conversation, and, and they're telling me it's treat o'clock. What's what's healthy? I don't know. I tell you all the time. I don't know what's healthy. What's I'm, healthy? The first, that first thing I remember telling you was that I didn't want to live on cardboard, but you know, it's. It's evolving um, the more I learn. Right now, healthy for me just means managing consumption. And, you know, because there was so much excess everywhere. Um, but hopefully it gets to a point of, we. I do keep more plants on the plate. And, you know, and I have to keep this simple so you can add, maybe ask me another question. But it's, it's saying, hey, I used to eat this every day or I used to eat this five times a week and getting it down to one day a week and making sure that I'm balancing protein with carbs, making sure that if there's sweets, that they're not every day, that they're one or two days. And that if we're eating like the battle this morning over wanting French toast and I said, you can have eggs. We got us and, it, and it's why mommy and I, I'm not going to explain the order of eating to a nine-year-old, but it's like you can, after you eat your, what I give you, which was protein, then I will give you toast, but I'm not going to just, and he said, but I want to eat it together. And I'm, no. So it's, I'm, it's, I'm still learning. I'm, I'm the last one you should be asking because, and, and especially in the mood I've been lately, man, I, I, yeah, if, if well, I've wanted it, it's been getting consumed. Well, you didn't you didn't hear my question right. I said, okay, what, ask me again. What healthy foods do you enjoy? What healthy foods do I enjoy? None of them. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I remember you saying. Girl, I'm gonna call you out. That's not what I remember you saying. So what if, what do we have that I was freaking out over the other day? Um your your, your Mexican fixing. The three no the taco fixing. No, 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 no. What was the three color something that the tricolor Marie, quinoa. Quinoa. Oh my God. So I've been eating white quinoa. I'm feeling tortured, but she said I have to eat this, these cardboard balls. So I've been eating it. And then her cousin came Stop over. Stories. I'm not telling and you. And her, her cousin came over 
and made the tricolor quinoa. And I, I sat there and, and shoveled it in my face very happily. So for me, what's been healthy, a, a healthy shift, because again, I was just doing so much wrong. Yes, you mentioned the Mexican food. I love that. I've been forced to, I've, I've developed a taste for the cilantro. No, I've developed a tolerance for the cilantro. But, um, you know, because usually if it had cilantro in it, it was, that was just something that had to get thrown over my shoulder. But I like eating the Mexican food. I, you know, I like my broccoli. I like my vegetables. The difference that we're having, Carmel, my way of eating vegetables was to cover it with butter and adobo. So for me, an entire meal is steaming broccoli, was steaming broccoli and covering it with butter and adobo, corns, string beans. I like vegetables, but now you went and said, I've got to cut out the oil and the salt. And I had to adjust. And while I'm making jokes, it's been fine. I still like the vegetables. And now when I, even the salt, if I use butter, the salt from the butter is sometimes overwhelming. And I actually started buying salt-free butter because I'm like, wait a minute, there's too much salt. I'm tasting the salt. The side effect of stopping the salt was now I taste it everywhere. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so I, 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 I will cut a joke if you want to ask me if I want broccoli or donut I'm I'm most often going to want the donut but I was not I went to Dunkin Donuts for coffee 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 and a coffee roll so I replaced my coffee roll with my yams then you told me I was eating too many yams so I cut back on that she's <laughs> tough you guys she is they're laughing because they know she is tough and then she asks you these questions that make you want to just hang the phone up her, her favorite one, how did that make you feel? <laughs> I say that all the time. How did you make, I, I don't know. It was, it was sweet. I liked it. I ate it. So I'm babbling and I'm having fun. But Carmel, there's so much that I like. And where I'm struggling is in, I'll tell you what I don't like. I, I don't care what I've said. I'm trying to tolerate tofu. I just don't like tofu. Then you shouldn't have to tolerate it. There's way too many other choices out there. The texture is just so, so. And I've, I've tried, she said to try it in this and try it in that. I've tried mixing it. It's just not, it's not hitting. Okay. Um, so you, you've tried it. And that's another thing, right? That I want to bring into this conversation, the open-mindedness and the, and I think I mentioned it about you the other day, Shelly, um, you're, you're, you were just wide open, like, look, I'll try this and I'll try that. And, and you did, you did the work and you realized that, you know what? No, that's not for me. I have foods like that too. I'm like, no, I just don't want it. I don't like it. I don't enjoy it. And there are way too many other choices for us to consume. There's like tempeh, which is a fermented type of tofu in very, very different texture. And there's ways you could do, you can fry tofu, although, you know, we're not really condoning frying, but you absolutely can. You can bake it. There's all different types of ways that would change the texture, but you tried it. And that is what counts. Because I think in this, in this culture, culture, you know, when we see something that looks funny and when we see something that we're not familiar with, we're like, no, I'm good, right? Like, no, I don't want to try that. But another thing <clears throat> that you mentioned just now, um, Shelly, is the covering in butter and adobo. And I think that's the way we all pretty much grew up learning how to consume our food. They had to be coated with something like we would mess up a perfectly healthy bowl of vegetables by throwing on the butter and throwing on the salt and the oils and the cheese. And, and by the time we were done with it, it's like, yeah, I love broccoli. <laughs> yeah, no, you love me. All that stuff that you threw on top of it. <laughs> and um, that's how I consumed food as well, especially entering into my teenage years all the way through after college, because growing up, we were eating the basic things at home. And then when mom let us lose, or when we started making our own money, actually, it's like, I want everything that the Americans are eating. <laughs> but um, no, I appreciate that. So you do, you said you do like vegetables and, and you've been trying them with all that, all the less butter. And now you, your, your taste buds are actually sensitive to uh, a lot of butter and things like that. So that's pretty good. I, I had to, I, I leaned on my mushrooms. We didn't talk about that, but the onions and mushrooms, which were always a part of my life 
I mean, I'm buying them two and three packs at a time now. Nice. Because, you know, it's, that's the stuff that cooks down. And since you, you, you know, you don't want us cooking with the oil, that kind of mix it, it, the, the water in it and it breaks down. It, it makes a nice little elixir um, to, to make it palatable. I agree. Mushrooms are phenomenal. Some people can't take, see, some people can't take the texture of mushrooms, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, chickpeas, lentils, seitan, soy curls, all suitable substitutes for tofu. Tofu also has different firmness and can be frozen and thawed to change the texture. One that, thank you for that. I don't know <laughs> how to, um, um, pronounce that. Now the seitan, I, I don't know. I, I have mixed feelings about the seitan only because that's pure gluten. And for those- What who, is it? It's, it's pure, gluten. It's gluten. It's, gluten. it's, it's just it's gluten. gluten. Okay. That's it's, yeah, and it's, I, it's pure gluten. Go ahead, Maisha. Yeah. And I, I mean, you know, health, healthy is as healthy does. I, healthy for one person is somebody else's poison. So I, I outside of the fact that most people- well, everybody really, no one should be eating processed foods. People need to figure it out. There are folks who've cured diseases on vegan, folks who've cured diseases on carnivore. The studies abound for whatever works for someone's body. So get with somebody who can test your body and figure it out. I don't do soy products because soy um, can create estrogen dominance. Estrogen dominance can lead to fibroids and other issues within the womb. So I don't do soy milk. I don't do tofu. I don't do any of that just because it's not that it's not that those products are bad. It's just this once everybody got a whiff of the soybean and it started to get processed, it, mm -hmm. it got processed like everything else got processed. So, and so for me, I, now for someone else, like as I'm going through menopause, maybe I might start incorporating those because maybe that might be helpful, right? With estrogen. So maybe in, in the coming years, I might incorporate some tofu. But at and this just, day, just, yeah. just before you go on, that that's very controversial about the estrogen. And yeah. many studies and researchers say that there is not enough estrogen in there to cause any type of, um, any, any for the majority of people, right? Any right. type of discomfort or any type of worry from the majority of people. But again, you started off by saying, which I think is very, very fair. Somebody's healthy might be somebody else's poison when it comes to specific foods, especially when you have um, um, sensitivities, right? So I just right. wanted to point that out. So yeah, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, no. That's a, that's okay because that that is that is that's the whole point of it, right? Because I'm not I'm not telling people don't eat don't eat tofu, but I'm saying, what I'm saying is <laughs> don't eat everything because someone tells you to eat it. Don't not eat it. Like you, we really actually do, as Carmel often says, we have to be our own detectives and see what works for, for us. So, you know, folks will be looking online and it'll be like, somebody says, go eat this way. And, and then you find out that it wrecks havoc on your body, even though it's healthy, it's, it's not what's healthy for your particular body. So mm -hmm. that's, that's why. And I'm going to, I'm going to say this out loud um, to some of the ladies who are chiming in. And I think you're on my channel. I want you to know that we have a respectful conversation here. And if I feel at any point in time, if you're on my channel, that you're not being respectful, I'm going to remove you from the conversation. Okay. All right. Let's carry on. Ooh. <laughs> I'm so curious. Yeah, this is this is a conversation between us and and you are absolutely invited to be a fly on the wall um, when we would encourage it. But uh, what we're saying does not necessarily pertain to the individual, you know, and, and just to my Yisha's point, just because somebody says something is healthy doesn't mean for us to run out and get it. But just like I was t commenting on Shelly, Shelly's like, I'm open. Let me try something I have have not tried before, right? And I think that's where it really lends itself um, to, to us promoting what that better relationship between us and what our bodies really need and want and what our taste buds need and actually want and what we need to thrive. So we heard from Maisha. What about you, Dr. Jamisa? How would you like to... Um, I, I feel like for me, everything, everything has a balance. Uh, I'm not, um, 
uh, I really don't like a lot of meat anyway. So that's not a, a, a big thing for me. Um, <clears throat> but I love all the fruits and vegetables. I love all of that. I'm not big on the processed, the processed foods like the tofu and whatnot and all that. Just because I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't like it on my palate. But I, I love vegetables. I love salads. I love all of the healthy stuff. Every now and again, I'll eat more meat than I do the vegetables, but that's rare. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I love it all. I love it all. Even even a little bit of the processed stuff I have right. to get away from. But I love it all. You know, I enjoy it and I do it in balance. So because of that, you know, it doesn't affect me, you know, it, my health as it pertains to my health because I'm not on any type of medications or anything like that. But um, I do not shy away from a good salad. I do not shy away from vegetables. I love it all. I do. So, I love it. Yeah. Right. Real oh. quick, Chris on Instagram says it's the four different shades of brown for me. Talking about <laughs> us. So <laughs> thanks, Chris. Um, so yeah, okay. So just to just to give context, my idea of healthy before before I discovered um plant-based, and I want to talk to I want I want to talk about plant-based and meat as well. But my idea of healthy was a protein bar. Now, if anybody of you knows, if any one of you knows, a protein bar is basically a candy bar with some protein in it. And gosh, if I was having that for dinner and lunch, I was just like, that's my protein bar. I got my meal replacement in. I got my protein, low calories. That's all I cared about. Uh, yeah, every once in a while, I would have an apple. I remember, you know, on the food pyramid, how it says how many servings of foods and fruits and vegetables you should have. I remember thinking, looking at that pyramid as as distorted as it was, we know now, I, re I remember thinking there's no room for fruits and vegetables. Like there's no room for it as a young kid when we were just eating rice and meat. <laughs> like we rarely ate vegetables. And I remember thinking, where, where, where am I supposed to fit all that food in? I'll just stick to what my mommy gives me, right? Rice and meat. And like, I think I'm doing pretty okay. Um, so, so, you know, what's healthy, again, to Maisha's point, what's healthy for me might not be healthy for somebody else. There are people out there that are, are like, um, I've been, oh, I've been, I've been called out on many times on social media and like come at because you know, the vegetables is not a meal I would get. Vegetables is not a meal. And I'm just, really? kind of, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. They will come out and say vegetables is not a meal, but I know that vegetables can provide our macro in, our macronutrients, which is the carbohydrates, the fats, and the protein, as well as our micronutrients, vitamins and minerals that our bodies need in, in order to thrive. It, you have enough of that, and you can get it all. Let's see. Aim to eat the rainbow, colored range, and variety of foods. Mm -hmm. Avoid anything in a package with more than three ingredients. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> That's Carmel 101. But Carmel, do you know how many salads I've made that were delicious and I couldn't finish it? So if I'm eating and I'm full and I'm not hungry for hours on end, doesn't that make it a meal? Didn't I have a meal? You have a meal, yes, when when it's just like maybe just a bunch of spinach and you're full, that doesn't necessarily constitute a meal. What would consider what would be considered a meal is if you had your um I think what's important, a few of the things that's important, okay, uh, your protein, mm -hmm. healthy fats, which comes, I believe, from fruits and vegetables, excuse me, from vegetables. You can get that. And and I'm not just talking about like greens. I'm not just, I'm talking about whole foods uh, um, such as I had, such as our greens, our grains, right? Um, nuts and seeds and berries, fruits and vegetables, all, all of it, everything and anything that comes from the earth, root vegetables. Not, let's not forget our root vegetables, the beets, the, the, the potatoes, right? Um, Oh, and of carrots. Course, thank you, carrots. You know all the all the little yeah. carrots. <laughs> really? Be beets for sure. If you give me it, beet juice, I can drink. Beets in a smoothie, probably. If you give me beets on a plate, I am telling you right now. They don't carrots, do anything. No, I'm with I can. You, I can Maisha. taste. I can taste. I can taste beets. Beets and black eyed peas will be sitting <laughs> over to the side for me. Carrots, I can now eat. As a child, I could not stand them at yeah, all. But I couldn't stand onions. 
I love you don't onions, like onions now. I know I love onions now. I hated oh. them as a child, right? Oh. But I'm just saying because it's weird. Like, like a carrots, I'll eat them, but I'll eat them really fast. Okay. I still don't like them. For me, carrots is not a go-to for me, but every once in a while I'll bake them and they'll taste delicious to me. But I still, when I see them in the supermarket, I probably still won't pick it up unless I intentionally like have some kind of a recipe cooking for somebody other, somebody else. And I'm like, I'll throw some carrots in there. It's not a go-to. I'm with Car you on the Carrots and hummus. You you uh, you know carrots and hummus. <laughs> That's my go-to. Yeah. The, the end of the day, the the, uh, the the world is ending. If there's hummus and a bag of carrots in that fridge, that's the that's survival food for me. That's very interesting. The black eyed peas for me, Maisha, uh uh, or the lima lima beans. I you don't like them. them? Like, I've grown into them. I've grown into them. They initially no, but I've grown to like them. Not yeah. I. Not I. And that's sweet that's peas, New Year's food. I can God, only, it's only one day a year. I can, yeah. <laughs> I can only weird. put my sweet peas in a smoothie because I don't taste it. Sweet peas to me are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't just sweet peas. You're talking about the green peas, sweet peas? Yeah, the little sweet peas. Yeah. In a, what won't you put in a smoothie, Carmel? Oh, oh my, my smoothies are green smoothies. My smoothies taste like the garden. My smoothies taste like the garden. Like you just took a bunch of grass and threw it in a blender. And I love it. And I put in, I put in like herbs and spices. <laughs> I love my smoothie. But again, that's something that 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 tastes good to me. I, I've acquired that palette. Um, gave, if you gave that to me just a year, a year and a half ago, I would be like, what are you giving me? Why would you blend grass and feed it to me? No. We grass? But, like just just grass. I'm just being facetious. Oh, oh guys, listen. I watched Carmel's video of her making her smoothie. Now I thought I put a lot of stuff in my smoothie, and I I do. I have a I, I do, my smoothies are wheatgrass and flaxseed and chia seed and protein powder and acai and and hemp seed. Like that, I put a lot in my smoothies. But then I saw Carmel's <laughs> video, and I was like, how how does she even fit that in? Because I have the same. I was like, did it not overflow? Like, how she must have got the got it down. That's that was she got a those whole... guns, so she, so you know she's holding it in place. Yeah, I was like, that's a lot. But she also likes hers like an acai bowl. Like my smoothie is, I drink it. Her smoothie is like pudding. I, food. I love it. Yeah, but I was like, wow, she that was <laughs> that's a lot in that <laughs> smoothie. One of you guys. <laughs> wow, well, I've impressed Maisha. I think that's. Um... <laughs> Oh, I'm off, I'm often impressed. I look, I'm often impressed. I'll, I'll be looking at Carmel's. I, see, I watch your your food videos. Thank you. Yeah, I'm always I'm always looking at your food video. And the other day, I was like, I'm gonna try that apple chia seed thing. It's just that I, I, I'm I'm working with do my thing with apples because they because they make me nauseous. But I was like, I'm gonna try it because it looked really good. And I was like, I have chia seeds. I have the cashew milk. I'm gonna get the apples. Yeah, I, lo I love your recipes. Like Shelly said, I'm waiting for the book. Thank you. <laughs> but she keeps saying she's not going to give it to us. On one end, so she wants us to eat healthy, but then she says she's not going to tell us what to eat. Or, uh, but I, I eat the meals like, with the two and three things in it, not all that stuff. You be in there for too long with all that stuff. We wait, wait, wait. Was that? With your, your meals, it's a lot. I need the, the three or four ingredient ones. So my, about my, the, my meals or, or my or my smoothies? The smoothies, yeah, which? Both. Yeah, because I feel like my meals are pretty easy. Oh, oh, my salads. My salads have a lot of, my salads have a lot in them, for sure. For sure, I throw a lot. Because I I, I got to tell you, I'm, I, I'm always shooting for the most vitamins and minerals and, and protein and all the things that I can get at one time. And it makes, for me, it makes, I love the texture because when you don't, especially when I started with the healthier eating, I'm missing flavor than I'm used to at McDonald's or KFC. So now I want to kind of distract myself for lack of a better word with texture and different types of flavors, right? And crunch. So yeah. when I put all those things in there, that's what I'm doing. And I just and I just happen to really enjoy the texture and crunch and and all of those so, things. That I yeah. throw. And I'm glad we talk about texture. I'm here for that. Real quick, Shelly, before before I forget, because 
Listen, I don't know what's going on today, this Friday. Are y'all off today? Is that because it'll be even on Instagram? I'm like, are y'all off today? I like it. We love it. We're here for it. <laughs> on uh, on Instagram, we've got um, Quam Cammy Cammy Beret. Okay, fifty five. She's uh, she he he. Oh, hello, hey sir. Okay, uh, go to the produce, ladies. Get the fifty fifty pack with Mizuna, Lola Rose, Green Leaf, Red Leaf, Arugula, etc. Fire. And also, I normally do that with mangoes. Oh, he eats mangoes. He was adding pineapple. <laughs> Lord help me today. Still at ginger and avocado sometime. Chris said, I have to start this workout. I'm sitting at the, at the machine <laughs> watching you. He's watching us at the gym. Thank you. For the last Chris. 20 minutes. I mean, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I really appreciate it. All right. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Well, and I was just going to say, so, okay. you know, again, the oh, texture gosh. became so important because Carmel's again, she's trying to get, she's convincing me quietly to try all of these things. I do not do the avocado. It is just bland mush. I, you know, I like chickpeas. So having the flax seeds and other little things, just, you know, making this pile of stuff, not only was it tasty, the texture, when I had a texture that I didn't quite love, it got masked by having this bowl of texture. So I had flavor and texture and it helped me a lot. I love that. I love that, Shelly. And, and it's about the experimenting, right? Especially yeah. you let off by saying like avocado doesn't even taste like anything to you, which, oh my gosh, avocado is avocado. so tasty. Me I can do. It's so amazing. So yeah, good. Oh my it, God. Mom. Like lemon juice it. on mm -hmm. it or something. Mm -hmm. Oh Lemon, tomato, onion, and cilantro. Oh, and oh, throw some garlic in there for me. Oh, it takes oh. up to 21 days to allow the taste buds to change. So, you know, the, it, this is not a taste buds change thing. This is just <laughs> the way they're gushing over it. There are two things that disappear in my house, avocados and bananas, and not by my hand. I, I appreciate all of you guys who think that it's awesome. I don't. <laughs> you know, there's a, there are people who hate mayonnaise. There's other people who love mayonnaise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just a thing. It's, it's a, and the decision making in this is that I want to eat healthier. And what I did do that I told you, Carmel, and I'll tell the ladies, because I like my sauces and we're making these changes and you can't, I can't have all the sauces I want. Avocado is a flavor that likes to be flexible and it, it likes to bend to your will, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So I found that I started using it with to make salad dressings and, you know, to, to get that creamy texture back that I wanted in certain ways. So I'm not done experimenting. We're none of us are done experimenting, right? As long as we're alive, we can experiment. So I who knows what we'll come up with in the future? Oh, 100%. 100%. And I think that's what's so exciting about it is the constant experimenting and trying something new that you had not before. Like last night, I tried something new with my tempeh and I was like, ooh, I like this. Okay. So Tiffany Taylor says, and dinner for two ideas for bringing a man home on first day. Mm. So one day I had a friend coming over and um, he is so not anything close to plant-based. So I actually tried my very first um, um, Beyond Burger, one of those, one of those things. And that was the only time I had tried it. And then the next time I had it was when we were on the ship together earlier this year. But um, I was just like, okay, I'm not going to. I'm not gonna like um, torture this guy. So I actually bought one and you know, in the middle of it, he's just like, you're plant-based. I'm like, yeah. He's like, so what are we eating? <laughs> and I said, it's a plant-based burger. He's like, it's pretty good. I was like, Whew. <laughs> I, you know, somebody comes over to your home, you want them to enjoy, but at the same time, you want them to, you know, you don't want to feed them what you wouldn't necessarily eat. And so mm -hmm. I felt pretty safe with that and he was okay with it. And I actually, um, fried some, I air fried, uh, sweet potatoes. So that was a fun part of our meal as well. We won't go into the air fryer because I know that's a whole different conversation in and of itself, but for people with an air fryer, that's an option for you to really crisp your root vegetables, your fries in an air fryer and not consume so much oil. Um, 
but yeah so anybody else dinner for two i feel like I um feel I'll, like I'll do a i'll do a i'll do an episode uh when it's my week on what 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 not to eat and what to i got y'all <laughs> do my <laughs> just stay tuned okay yes yes oh you know what i'm, I'm gonna leave it there yes <laughs> <laughs> um, let's just give you, uh, I'm going to give you a, a, a foreshadowing or whatever you want to call it. You eat a lot of fruit, you're kind of going to taste sweeter. You just will. <laughs> so I was over here like, oh, uh, mangoes and pineapple in the smoothie, we say. Yes. 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 Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And, and said, I may add a little avocado just to make it thick. I have to eat the avocado with fruit. Chris said, I like them thick also. My plates of food. It's just been a Friday today, y'all. Oh yes. <laughs> and he also says, uh, uh, this is this is Kemi Bure. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, my, my guy. I have some recipes on my page, plant-based, ravioli with chickpeas. Oh, see, that sounds good. Ooh, Fresh peas, know. lentils, other greens. I eat whiting fish, that is a fish to eat, and unleavened bread every blue moon. Okay. So, okay. okay. That all sounds, sounds really yummy. good. Mm, and right. are you are you cooking this are you cooking this my guy let he's us know in the comments I but the, there's so much to do with peas though the peas so I'm, I'm I'm not gonna sit here and pretend for two seconds that I know more than I do but I'm on this mission to crack through some of these codes because Miss Carmel exclaims that she doesn't care about us liking our food and I keep exclaiming that I must like my food. I want Wait to Wait a second. I got it. No, that's right. my interpretation. I'm not taking it back. I got to cut you off. No, no, no. <laughs> You're people that I don't care whether you like it or not. Every time I talk I'm going to go food, find the I'm going to find the B-roll and play it back. What did you eat and did you enjoy it? Like that is so important to me. Now when I'm dealing with somebody with a chronic condition, I want you to enjoy your food. However, that's not the most important <laughs> thing on the menu because we got to get you well. Okay. okay. Now you can speak. You okay. are telling an untruth about me. <laughs> All right. I I was re I received that and I I, I will accept that's that. That's how Shelly. That's how Shelly took it. That's how that's how I heard it. <laughs> that's how she when heard I, it. I heard that I'm no, trying no, no. to figure out my sauces and creams and whatever. You know, it's like she she doesn't get it, but I have to feed other people. And so it's how do you take this stuff that other that because I'm I am on a mission to cook once and feed everyone and have mm -hmm. everyone be satisfied. Natural. So oh, I want to crack that. that code. It's good not yeah. and it's not going to be easy. But there are some great recipes out there, like the the lentil ravioli. I want to. That sounds amazing to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was never able to crack that code, Shelly. I'm just telling you now in a house full of seven people. So <laughs> when when you you let me know how you did it, if you if, if look look at look look at Dr. Jimmy's here too. I, I I was I was one of those people. I mean, it was there was probably at least three different meals happening on any given night. Nah, that's really, it was all the same. Me. Not me. If I'm cooking, this is what I'm cooking. <laughs> I'm not. Sorry. <laughs> if I'm cooking, this is what I'm cooking. <laughs> If that, they want that's me that's what I'm time on their own, then that's fine. But if I'm cooking, this is what I'm cooking. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Demisia, right. I was brought up the same way. My mother cooked for five people and whoever else was living in our house in a, any particular time. My mom made one meal. And mm -hmm. listen, not only did that meal go for everyone, but it lasted throughout the week because she's like, I'm working. And we, I'm making enough. You're just gonna have to meal, reheat meal and prep. Oh, look, none of, original meal none prep. of you had children. I had had children on the spectrum, which is a little different. When some child is looking at the food and and the the texture and the stuff is is yes. a is an issue, then you end up having to do something different. Now, mind you, we could have been like that in my house too. And my, and I remember the one time my parents were like, you're going to eat that food I gave you. And they made my sister eat her string beans and she threw that right back up on her plate. And guess what? That was the that was the end of that story. So. <laughs> uh. But no, Shelly, I do I do understand. And yes, there is something to like produ producing. Uh, you know, like I, I I applaud people who batch cook too, right? Because Carmel can do that, I think. And I I I I I I could never master it because I get bored really easy. But if you can find a way to at least cook your food, yours and 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 your son's food then you just got one other person to worry about. You, you know what I'm saying? Like make foods that are healthy, that he likes, that you can eat. 
and 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 you know progress made and then you only just have to worry about her versus making something different from for him and you make his foods your foods at the same time mm, we're figuring or, it out or 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 cook for the most complicated person and, mm. and then just adjust it for you maybe you have a few extra ingredients there like i always say make your refrigerator the buffet that mm -hmm. make it for the most difficult person, you know, it, and then you work off of there. There's, again, I know I've never met anybody as creative you, as you, Shelly. So if you haven't cracked it, that's because mm -hmm. it's not there yet to crack, be cracked. But when you do, let me know. I think we can make millions together. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I wanted to come back around to something that you had mentioned, Shelly, because you were like, you were eating that, um, the, the white quinoa, you don't like it, doesn't taste like anything. And then I come over and I made the quinoa and it's like, wait, what am I eating right now? And it, a lot of it has to do with what you cook it with. Right. Mm -hmm. So I cook my quinoa many times with homemade vegetable broth. I'm a little extra. I take I gather up all my scraps and I boil it for hours on end and I make my vegetable broth. Or that day when we're at your house, what I actually boiled it in was coconut milk. Mm -hmm. And so that added a nice little flavor to it. So if you guys out there can tolerate coconut milk. That's another way to do it. And then we added some more ingredients in there. So. All right, I don't know how to who I don't know how to pronounce that. Let's but, just say let's just say you know PR 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 K okay. yeah it might be power or something. Anyway, eat for the benefit of the trillions of cells of the whole body, not just the mouth. Meal prepping is great time saver. Can mix and match different sides to make whole meals. Yes, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> So, yeah, and then just adding different, just adding the different um, ingredients. So that day we added nuts, we added celery, we added, I don't know if there was celery, but just a bunch of things in there to make it a nice mouthfeel and good taste and flavor. Christina says, what are the ages of the women in the chat? Seems like an under 40 crowd. Well, the only reason I put that up there, right, is because, first of all, Christina, not, and for those of you in the chat, not a one of us is under 40, not a one of us is under 50. <laughs> How about that for the healthy eating? How about that? So maybe it's just our youthful vigor from the foods that we are eating that is attracting folks who are in their 30s and 40s <laughs> and under. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it is still nice, you know, and, and I, I'll help us wind down. It's, it's nice to explore all of the conversations. It's nice to explore eating socially because we are social creatures. We're social every day in our normal households, whether we're having girls night at, at our house, whether we're having a date, whether it's a first time date or our cooking for our spouses you know, it's it's still nice to master this food, to have it be healthy and enjoyable. And I, li I like, Carmel, how you said that he said, oh, so you're plant based. It, it didn't seem confrontational, seemed really low key and he, like he was involved. And when you're preparing food that tastes good, period, you know, that's just a nice way to exist, because if we can eat healthy and enjoy what we're eating all at the same time, then, you know, that just makes life easier, in my opinion. But, I, but what do I know? I, I haven't cracked the code yet. I'm still working on it. And I agree. I, I think that you brought up a, a very good point, Shelly, because studies have shown that people who eat with people that they like and love and enjoy the food and, and people who pay extra attention to the foods that, they've, that they're consuming and who show appreciation, um, the, the food actually goes into their bodies doing what it's supposed to do. Yes, even that fry. Now, now I'm not giving everybody a, a green light to go eat some fries, but, um, but I'm not giving you a red light either. So that's something definitely to be considered when we're actually paying attention to our food, when we're paying attention to who we're with and how much of a good time we're having and how we feel about ourselves in that particular moment in time. Mm -hmm. I'm convinced that's how my family in the South end up living that as long as they did the way yes. some of them eat is because they're eating together in community and mm -hmm. it's just part of it. I'm sorry, Jimmy, see, so you're going to say something. Yeah, no, I was just saying, just speaking <laughs> to your topic too, you know, how do I make healthier food choices? Just make healthier food choices. Yeah. Spend some time thinking about it. Just 
just take some time out and plan a little bit more, you know, and sometimes you're going to fall off the rails. Sometimes your, your schedule is not going to have time for it, but just try to incorporate that, especially as we get older, because it helps us to live a, a better, longer, healthier life if we do. So that's, yeah. that's all. Just, just make a, make a decision. Just make- yeah. Yeah. Just make, I always, I, I love that. Just make a decision. It's, it's that easy, but that, that daunting. That hard, right? That yeah, easy, right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, paying, paying extra attention. I think we all have a basic idea of what healthy is. It's just the mm-hmm. fact that it doesn't taste like the foods that we are used to consuming. That's what makes it hard. And that's what makes it makes people say, oh, I can never do that. Right. But you, you could, you could. Mm-hmm. And if you were forced against uh, uh, your back against the wall, you you will, mm-hmm. um, for, the, for the most part. But yeah, just just make a decision, like Dr. Jamesia says, and do it. Call out to either one of us. I think we all have <laughs> a certain expertise in the area as far as what we uh, we can only go by our own experience, right? Um, and what what we see what we see in in articles because there are a lot of things coming up people are becoming a lot more health conscious which is why you see a lot of varieties of foods being offered in different restaurants and on different menus now Mm -hmm. because uh, because of insensitivities like gluten and because of people being different um, consciously thinking about the earth or, or mm. not eating and consuming meat, which I wanted to speak to, but we're running a little bit out of time, but I'm not opposed to meat. Like I'm not gonna turn my nose up at anybody who eats meat. I don't think meat is unhealthy. To a certain extent, I do. And consuming too much of it, and if it's not sourced properly, etc. Those factors, those factors aside, whatever makes your body feel good, whatever makes your body thrive, and you know when you're feeling good, and you know when you wake up and nothing's hurting and that what you just ate gave you all the energy, burst of energy in the world for you to have clarity of mind, mm-hmm. agility and mobility in your joints, to wake up feeling mm-hmm. refreshed, to not feel bogged down after you've eaten. You know those feelings. Pay attention and act accordingly. Absolutely. Uh, just real quick, want to just uh, uh, over here, uh, Adawam, who let us know how to pronounce his name, and Chris have been having a a, a, <laughs> a great conversation over here. They appreciate the fact that it wasn't a man who asked about our ages, and you know, but they were they were complimenting us. <laughs> they, basically, we look good, ladies. Um, and Adawam saying that he's been doing this for about five or six years. He does the, the the meal prep. He used to eat French fries at Burger King, Wendy's, Five Guys, but now he has no choice but to but to meal prep. And he also says to eat for the brain, blood, and gut. Yes, eat mm-hmm. for those things. And to those of you over on uh, YouTube, we are so appreciative of your comments. Just, I'm going to say this real quick so we don't forget it. So y'all come back. We are here Mondays and Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. Eastern, and we are here Fridays at 11.30 p.m. Eastern. So come on back Monday, Wednesday nights, and Fridays at 11.30. We loved having the conversation <laughs> happening in the chat. Go ahead. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so... I think this is a good this is a good time um, for us to to say happy weekend. And um, Maisha, thank you. Dr. Jamisia, thank you. Shelly, thank you for participating in this conversation. And everybody who chimed in in any way, shape, or form, thank you for being here and just um, and listening to us talk about food. So, what's for lunch today? I ask. <laughs> All right. I'm not gonna tell y'all what I ate this morning. That that was that. Well, no, that was cheese quesadilla. So no, I, I won't be eating again till like five six o'clock. <laughs> okay. Filling. When I do eat, it's gonna be a salad and a baked potato. Salad and a baked potato. Okay. Okay. I have some. <laughs> Leftovers from life. <laughs> space. That's the I stopped at Dunkin' Donuts this morning after I dropped the boy off at camp. <laughs> You're muted, Shelly. You're muted, Shelly. <laughs> You're muted, Shelly. I, I see. No, the my my face wasn't didn't mean anything. I was just thinking that I I had eggs and toast this morning. That was it. Something simple. Yeah, yeah. It's better than and- cereal and milk. Like baby steps, you know what I'm saying? Well, we're we're moving away. The what is it? No desserts for breakfast. So, That's right. you know, yeah. so it's, it's. But but I was I was hungry today. I usually eleven 
you know, 11 o'clock, I'm fine. I get to 12, one o'clock. But today I, w- I stretched to push myself to 11. I was hungry. Okay. And that's another thing. Um, I know Dr. Jamesia believes in time restricted and I do it too. But when the body's asking for food, yeah, listen, listen. That's it. That's it. All right, you guys. Well, if any of you guys are in the New Jersey area on November 9th, we are going to be getting together for uh, Mastermind. There are details, uh, Black Coffee, Honey, and Grits. Oh, okay, we got the Grits and Grace up. So we're going to be getting together to have just Grits and Grace. We're going to, we're always talking about SAS class and all that ass, but yes, sometimes we've got grits. And as we are planning for our future, it can get a little bit gritty. So we're going to get together and push each other forward and um, build our success, help each other be successful. It's wherever we are, we can go another step further. So if you are in the area and you would like to come participate with us, then uh, check in with us and we'll tell you more as uh, the days come to us. That's it. Chris said, Chris said, one day I'm going to make a trip to Jersey to hang out with you ladies. We want to come on, Chris, come on. Yeah, you know, so come, right. come spend yeah. the day with us oh. November 9th. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, come spend a day with us on November 9th. It's going to be a full day of workshops. It's going to be a full day of you. Uh, really, if if entrepreneurship is what you want to do, if if um, taking your life to another level is what you want to do, if you're if you're feeling stuck in your career, if, whatever that is, if that's if you're ready to move to the next level in your life, then grits and grace is where you're going to want to be. We're going to have a wonderful uh, continental breakfast for you all. And we're also going to have catered lunch for you. And you will get to really speak with each one of us. And if you don't know, we are all professionals in our own right, if you missed our intros in the beginning. But please head to the link there. And you can also visit us at uh, blackcoffeehuntingandgrits.com to learn more about us. Of course, you're going to go ahead and follow us on YouTube and like subscribe and share because y'all had a good time today. Of course, you're mm-hmm. going to go follow us on Instagram as well at Black Coffee, Honey and Grits because why would you not want to do that? And we have a Facebook group that you can come into where we teach every Monday evening. One of us is teaching a class in there. It is only $7 a month. You can come on into that as well. All of the information can be found at our website, Black Coffee, Honey and Grits dot com yes thank you ladies and thank you everybody and we're going to sign out have a beautiful weekend bye y'all <laughs>